Hey everybody, Jake here, and today I have something a little bit different. Today we're going to do like a holiday gift guide style thing. Um, I'm hoping to get this posted before Cyber Monday, and before all the fountain pen deals are gone. But I'm going to give you a few different price ranges, and I'll have a timestamp links in the description so you can jump which price range you would like, and a few recommendations in each price range. Um, the price ranges we have are 1 to 50, 50 to 100, 100 to 200, and then 200 and up. Now, I know the 200 up's a bit of a broad kind of sweeping um, tier, but to be honest, the possibilities beyond $200 are limitless. So, <clears throat> we're going to explore a little bit more of the finite areas, the, you know, the price ranges that I listed. So, let's go ahead and get started with the 150. All right, first recommendation up in the 1 to 50 range is the Pilot Metropolitan with a bit of a caveat. So this pen is fantastic. You can get it for, you know, between $15 and $18, depending on where you look. But coming next year, there's going to be a price hike on this pen. If you haven't heard about this, definitely look it up. It's going to go up to about $30. This pen is not worth $30 when you compare it to the competition. It's just not. It is a great, great pen. I really, really respect Pilot. This is a wonderful pen for $15 to $18. But I think they're trying to get it out of the way of the Pilot Explorer, so it's going to get a pretty significant price bump. Great nib on these things, though. The section's pretty nice. The pen is built of brass. It's pretty durable. Um, this plastic band, they have it in a bunch of different colors and patterns and all that stuff. Really, really nice pen. Again, these run between you know $15 and $18, depending on where you get it from, really. Next up, we have the Pilot Kakuno. Same nib as the Metropolitan. A little bit more child-friendly if you're looking for something like that. Again, a bunch of different colors. This one's clipless, but it does have a roll stop. It's a bit faceted, so it won't roll off the table when the kid's using it. Slightly more corrective grip, so you can kind of get used to using fountain pens. And the little smiley face uh, nib. This one has a wink on it. I believe these come in a couple different nib sizes. This one is fine. It writes very, very smooth. And it takes the same converters and cartridges as the Pilot Metropolitan. So you can just fit any standard pilot cartridge. I do believe these fit the Con 70 as well. So if you want a ton of ink capacity, you can do that. These cannot be eyedroppered, by the way. They do have holes in the back. So if that was your plan, no luck. But these are around $10 or so. Again, depending on where you get them from, great, great price. And a pretty good pen for that price. Next up, the most compared pen to the Metropolitan. And what I think is going to beat it because of, you know, the price hike. Um, it's going to be the Lamy Safari. So this pen is right at that $30 price range. These usually sit around $28. Uh, they do have a few advantages over the Safari, though. The plastic material is super, super durable. It's really, really strong. And they have a good clip. Industrial kind of design, so you may not be into that. Some people might love it. One of the biggest advantages of, the, advantages of these Safaris is the nib interchangeability. So that is a fine nib. However, these nibs are so easy to swap. You just grab it on the side and pull it off, and you can grab any other Lamy nib and just slide it right back on there. Super useful. You can get these in a ton of different nib sizes. You can buy spare nibs if you just want to try a bunch of them or get them for someone who wants to try a bunch of them. These also have a kind of corrective grip, which some people love, some people hate. You know, if it's your first fountain pen, I, I don't imagine you having too big of an opinion on it until you've used some other stuff. But this is my... Uh, first real fountain pen, and I, I really, really enjoyed it. Excellent, excellent pen. Especially, you know, officially now being cheaper than the Metropolitan. Puts in some pretty good competition. <clears throat> Next up is the Pen BBS 323. I no longer have the 323. I actually gave it away um, to a friend. But I do have the Pen BBS 469 here. And this one's a touch over $50. But it's a really, really, really nice pen. And the reason I brought this out is to show off the acrylic that is on some of these pen BBS um, fountain pens. This material is just absolutely gorgeous. They they do great, great job with their acrylic. Their nibs are very, very nice. They write super, super well. Um, almost all their pens, I believe, can be eyedroppered if they're the acrylic models. And they run anywhere from, you know, $10 to $20. This one you can pick up for a little over $50. Again, like $52-ish, I think, is how much I paid for it. Um, but you do get two nibs, two reservoirs on this particular pen. But any of the pen BBS models in that price range, I think, would be absolutely fantastic, honestly. Next up, another offering from China, the Moonman M2. 
I would not recommend this as a super beginner fountain pen, but it is a great fountain pen nonetheless. These are, I believe, about $18. The nibs, though, are incredible. Um, the one I purchased at least came with a regular, kind of a, a fine medium nib, and a stub nib as well. So you have, ni you have nib options. Um, you just you know pull it out and replace it. You can eyedropper these for absolutely massive ink capacity. This whole body right here fills up with ink, and it's, it's fantastic. Included rubber O-ring helps keep it sealed. You can always use some silicone grease if you'd like. And the pen, when you see ink sloshing around in it, is absolutely gorgeous. You can you can perfectly see whatever color you have in there. Really eye-catching, really attractive design. Excellent, excellent writer. Again, at a super, super affordable price. <laughs> Next up, we have a couple pens. These are the Jinhao X750 and the X450. So this one here is the X750, as you can see there. This pen's pretty good. I do have a Noodler's Steel Flex nib on there right now, but it does come with a standard Gen Hao nib. They're medium. Um, cylindrical grip section on this one. Brass body, really, really durable. These pins are great. They use standard number six size nibs, so you can just grab them and swap them out whenever you need to. They come with a cartridge. I mean, not a cartridge, I'm sorry, a converter. So you can immediately use your bottled ink. Really, really, really nice little feature there. The build's, you know, decent. It's not super good quality, but it feels much, much better more um, well-made than you would suspect for the price. And then next we have the X450, a little bit different. You can tell there's a few different design cues as far as the silhouette goes. Ton of colors in both of these, by the way. Um, the biggest difference on this is the two-tone nib that this one comes with, which I really, really like. And the section is ever so slightly molded to fit a bit of a triangular grip. So if this is a first fountain pen, it's really, really good for that as well. Both these pens are very, very heavy, very durable, and usually come in under $5, if you can actually believe that. Next up, we have the Twisby Go. Great, fantastic pen. Definitely go check on our review of this one if you're curious about it. Twisby is a great company. They're going to appear a lot on this list because under the $100 range, in my opinion, they're king, without a doubt. Um, this particular pen here, like a lot of beginner pens, cheaper pens, it has that kind of triangular corrective grip. So they can get used to using fountain pens, whoever you get this for. This one has a broad nib. It writes super, super smoothly. Really, really great. Good flow on this thing. If I can actually get this off, it's not normally very hard, but it's been a while since I've opened this particular pen. Here we go. I'm going to show you the filling mechanism here. So this is extremely simple to fill from bottled ink. It does only use bottled ink, so keep that in mind. Basically, you screw off this back part. comes in blue and smoke gray. And then all you do is press down this plunger. You press down the plunger, you dip it in ink, you let go of the plunger, and it sucks the ink up. You can see there's still some in there. My wife uses this pen excessively. And these are a fantastic value, probably one of the best values on the list, in my opinion. These are about $18. They don't have a clip. You have a good cap seal, though. It's not the most appealing design, in my opinion. Some people absolutely love this, though. So if you're looking for something a bit brighter, a bit easy to use, a bit attention grabbing, definitely, definitely one to look at. And then we have the Twisby Go's big brother or big sister, the Twisby Eco. You can get them in much more appealing colors than this. This is an absolutely hideous color, but my wife likes it, so that's what she's got. This is actually the Twisby Eco T. They have a regular Eco and the Eco T. They're the same price, but $28, $29, something like that. Really good clip, really interesting kind of aesthetic. This is a piston filler, so what you do is you twist this to push this piston all the way down, dip it in ink, and twist it to pull it back up, and it sucks the ink up in the pen. This one being the Eco T has a triangular theme going on. Normally the Eco caps are hexagonal. You can see this one's a bit more triangular. Triangular piston grip and a triangular pen grip as well, although this is significantly less severe of a triangular grip than, say, the Lamy Safari or the Twisby Go. This is ever so slight. You can kind of see the curves there, but it's not very obvious. If you want to back up a little bit on the pen to about here, you can get an almost perfectly round grip. Really, really nice. Great writing pen, fantastic value, good build quality as well. Um, I've owned several of these, never had any issues out of any of them. And these two pens are probably the ones I recommend the most on this list at this price range. All right. 
on to the $50 to $100 range. This has a few more pins in it, um, a bit more variety in it as well, and I think the $50 to $100 range, although there's not a ton of pins there, offers the most compelling value for your money um, beyond entry-level gold nib pins. There are you know, a couple on here, but this is kind of where you're getting a very serious, well-built fountain pen at this price. So let's start off with one of my daily carries, the Caveco Lilliput. This one is the copper version. This one is not quite under $100. It's right at it. But they also make this in brass and aluminum. The aluminum versions are about $50. So you can get this pretty cheap. You can also find these much cheaper on eBay sometimes. Um, again, this one is copper. I have beat this one to heck. This pen has been so roughly abused by me. Um, I carry it in my pocket every day. It has been washed in the washing machine twice, which is something. And there's some very unusual and unique patina going on with this particular pen, um, partially because of that. Just unscrews, and then you screw to post it on the back, so it becomes a regular-sized fountain pen. Now, one interesting thing about this is it only uses cartridges. So it is a cartridge-only pen. Please keep that in mind when you're purchasing this. But as far as a go everywhere, do everything pen, this is an excellent, excellent option. Again, it is super, super small. It's it's absolutely minuscule. It's super easy to toss wherever you gotta go. If you're getting this as a gift for someone, they can just toss it in their pocket, put it in their purse. This is smaller than a Fisher Space Pen if you have one of those. So it's very, very compelling, just the size alone. The price is pretty good, and the nibs on these are really, really, really nice. Speaking of Caveco, let's go ahead and move on to one of my personal favorite Cavecos and one that means a lot to me. Um, this is the Caveco All Sport. Now, this exact edition is a little bit more pricey. Um, oh, it's a little over 100. This is the June Bride Something Blue edition that they collaborated with Bung Box to do. But this general pen can be purchased for around 50 or $60. So what it is, is it's just a Caveco Sport pocket pen but it's built out of aluminum. Much, much more durable material for a pocket pen than plastic. So the pen unscrews, and you can see it's fairly short. It isn't unusable, I don't think, but it'd be very difficult. But the pen just pushes to post. It's a lot quicker to post than the little put. It is a little bit bigger though. Just to give you a quick size comparison here, you can see it's a little bit larger than the little put. So keep that in mind. Although it's still a very pocketable size, it does not come with a clip, that is an add-on, they just slide it right off. But this pen writes very, very well, it's very reliable. It can use Caveco's converters or cartridges, like it quite a bit. And the material is really, really nice. The finish on these is really, really astounding. The quality is very, very good. And the nibs, again, just like the ones on the little, the little put, are very, very good. So again, around $50 or $60. The clip's like an additional eight or so, but these are really, really good pocket pens. Okay. Pocket pins, mostly out of the way. We'll get to one more later. Let's go and move on to some larger pins. First up is the Conklin Duragraph or Duraflex. I think these are just a touch over 50. They may be right under. Um, this one was over, so I'm gonna put it here. This one was $60, but it is a very, very nice pen. Um, these were limited edition, but they do have these in a bunch of different colors, and they you can get flex nibs on almost any of them now. Flat top, flat bottom, classically shaped, a fairly large fountain pen. I really, really like this one a lot. A lot of rotations take off the cap, but that's not a huge issue. Slightly concave grip section. Again, pretty good size cartridge converter. It does come with a converter. It screws in. And this one in particular has the flex nib on it. So you get quite a bit of flexibility out of these nibs. They write pretty well. And you can get these also with any, any standard nib. So flex might be a little bit intimidating for someone who's a beginner. But if you're buying this for someone who's already into the hobby, I think a flex nib would be a great, great addition. These pens are very well made, very, very nice. They feel good in your hand. They're fairly classy, especially this one. And again, they offer them in a ton of different colors, different materials, and a couple different price ranges as well, if I'm not mistaken. So definitely go check these out if you're into something a bit more simplistic, a bit more minimalist. All right, on to a gold nib pen and the first one on this list. This is the Platinum 3776 Century. Now in America, these are like $170, but you can get these off of Amazon or eBay from the gray market sellers for around 70, maybe 80, really depends on where you get them from. 
For $70 or $80, this pen is a fantastic value. Pretty good uh, fit and finish on this. There are a few gripes that I mentioned in my review, but not very many. Kind of standard grip section. It's a little bit of a small pen, but it's by no means unusable. And the nib has a bit of feedback, but you can smooth that out if necessary. Or if you like that kind of pencil-like feedback, or whoever you're giving it to me, they, they will really appreciate this nib. It's a fantastic writer. It does not come with a converter, so make sure to purchase one of those. I do believe it comes with a cartridge though, and they're proprietary platinum converters. Really good converters though, some of my favorites. You can very easily post this pen and get it up to uh, slightly above average length, but even unposted, it's still very usable and a very, very, very good deal for under $100. Probably one of my favorite pens in this price range. Okay, onto one more pocket pen. This is gonna be the Twisby, again, these next three pens are Twisby. This is going to be a Twisby uh, Mini or Mini All or Vac Mini. You can insert any of those here. These are smaller pens from Twisby. And kind of like the Caveco, they're very similar length. They, they can be used unposted, but they also post and screw on just for some added durability. They Once they're screwed on and posted, they're fantastic length. Very, very pleasant to write with. Um, this is the All version, which just means it has aluminum for the piston and the section. Really, really good nibs from these ton of uh, different nib sizes you can get and a very very smooth pist piston mechanism which I'll go ahead and show you how you use that. You just twist it to get the piston to go down and when you dip it in the ink and then you twist the other way to get the piston to go back up and you suck the ink up in here. It can hold quite a bit. They're very 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 nice pens. I believe these are around $60 for this model, around $50 for the regular Mini and I believe around $70 for the Mini Vac which is, has a slightly different feeling mechanism that I'll show you in a moment. On to that one's big brother, the Twisby 580 slash 580 all. I have two of these because they're fantastic pens and they come in a ton of awesome colors. This one is the Lava. It's uh, basically the orange that they released a while ago. Same filling mechanism, just a piston. Uh, it does hold more. It's a little bit bigger pen. It's almost perfectly sized in my opinion. These are great, great pens and hands down my favorite in this price range. Again, great nibs ton of variety. You can see there's a bit better build quality than you see on like the Eco or the Go, which there should be, but very, very nice pens. Some of my favorite and probably the most recommended pen on this list is going to be the 580 or 580 All. I don't know too many people that I've met in real life that dislike these pens. They're just great riders, very good value at between $50 and $65, depending on which model you get. Okay, last pen on this list. Um, this is the Twisby VAC 700. This and the VAC Mini have the same filling mechanism, so I'll show you that in just a minute. This is a little bit larger than the Twisby 580. Um, bit different clip, a little bit of a bigger pen. I really, really like this pen though. And it does weigh a bit more, so if whoever you're getting this for likes heavier stuff, you know, this may be a good option. So to activate this vacuum filling mechanism, you basically just unscrew this back part and you pull. You want to pull all the way back it'll then you can dip it in the pen or dip it in the ink I'm sorry and then press it down all the way and when it gets down here it's gonna break the seal and the ink will fly up into the barrel it's really really cool to watch um, I do have an aftermarket nib on that on this because this pen can take any number six size nib so you can always buy other nibs for the pen or whoever you're giving this to can certainly buy that as well these are really really good pens these are about 75 I believe but great, great pens, huge ink capacity, absolutely enormous. If you're buying this for someone like a writer, this is the one to get. They hold a ton of ink, just a ton. Bit of a pain to clean out, but to be honest, if you're just going to use the same color, you can't really beat it. All right, on to the $100 to $200 price range. I only have five pens in this price range, but they're all very, very good. There's one that is a little bit overpriced, but I think the rest of them are of great, great value. So let's go ahead and start with one that is slightly overpriced. So this here is the Esterbrook SD Fountain Pen. There's a few very unique things about this pen. Um, Esterbrook used to be a pen company back in the you know, 50s, 60s. They were very prominent, but they were bought out, and this is kind of what they've become after a few different buyouts. This pen is about $150. They do offer large versions for slightly more. 
this bottle here though is $150. Pretty good size pen, very, very nice material. The nib writes pretty well. It's nothing mind blowing. It's probably my least favorite nib in this range, but that's not to say it's bad. The most compelling about, thing about this pen though is that you can get something called a um, MV nib adapter, which is a modern to vintage. Now what that will let you do is all of those Esterbrook nibs that they made back in the 50s, 60s on the Esterbrook J's and things like that can be attached to this adapter. They just unscrew. I've got here one here, I'll show you. They just have these little threads on them. They unscrew and they made hundreds of different types of these nibs. So, so many. So for $40, you get this nib adapter. It just screws onto the pen section. You just unscrew this part, screw this in, and you're good to go. Comes with its own converter and everything like that. Very, very compelling. Probably the most important part of this pen, in my opinion. So it's kind of a necessary add-on if you're getting this. That's an extra 40, which puts this pen about 198, I believe. Just under 200. It's the only non-gold nib. Well, not entirely true. It's the only steel nib on this list, but it's still pretty good. It does come with a converter. Um, the reason it's mainly on this list though, is the packaging. So I'm assuming you're getting this as a gift for someone. Um, one more feature is the cap has a slight spring in it so you can open and close it. It feels very, very cool. Most interesting about this pen though is the packaging. So when you're getting this as a gift, this is what that person's gonna see. They're gonna open this up and see this really, really cool cloth box. This Esterbrook established 1858 on it. You can easily take these stickers off. And it's just this, this fabric on almost all sides. It's a magnetic lid, you open it up, and then it the pen's just right there. It's sitting on this really soft bed. Comes with the cartridge, comes with the converter. It's it's a very, very nice and unique packaging. I like the way it opens up, kind of spreads out, displays the pen. It's very, very, very nice. And I think as far as gift giving, this is probably the best packaging of any pen on this list. It's absolutely insane and I love it. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to some better writing pens that are in a similar price range. First up, one of my favorites, one I use constantly, the Lamy 2000. Bit more of a minimalist pen. These were designed back in the 50s. Design has not changed at all since kind of a Bauhaus design. So very, very simplistic pen, very interesting pen, um, kind of a cool stone wash steel clip, and it has a hooded nib, which is the only pen on this list with a hooded nib. These pens are gold nibbed. <laughs> they're not made of gold. Um, they're gold nibbed, and where the material here meets the steel, this material is called Macrolon, has a very unique texture to it. It's usually where you're going to grip, and it's it's very, very pleasant. Some people don't like this pen. I love this pen. It's very, very interesting. Very nice, well-made pen. has a nice little metal disc here to help accent the clip when it's closed and accent the section when it's open. It's A lot of thought was put into this design, and you can really, really tell. One of my favorite things about this pen, though, you'll see here there's an ink window. I'm not going to, un well, you know, I'll go and unscrew it. It's fine. I have ink in here, but I won't spill any. So you can unscrew it, but there's nowhere to put a converter or a cartridge. One of the coolest things about this pen is that it's a piston filler, but you can't really see that unless you look for it. I'm shining the light now so you can kind of see right about there. There's a line, but it's so, so subtle, it's not even funny. If you're just looking at this pen on a desk, you're never going to see that. Works just like the Twisbees I showed you. You just twist it, push the piston all the way down, Put it in the ink, twist it, and suck the ink back up. Great, great pen. An absolutely fantastic writing pen. This is super, super smooth. Really, really great pen. I, I love this one. And I can't recommend this pen enough at, you know, 150, 160. Again, kind of depends on where you get it. Now, this next one is a higher-end version of the pen I'm going to recommend. It's just a little bit bigger. That's all it is. This is the Sailor... 1911 large, but for under $200, you can get the 1911 or the Pro Gear Slim. Pro Gear Slim is just a flat top version of this. Um, this particular color is North American exclusive. It's the Royal Tangerine, and you can get these pens a decent bit cheaper as well off of eBay and Amazon. Can't get it in these North American exclusive colors, but still pretty good. These pens are great. 
I I love this pen. It's it's awesome. The color is super really cool. That was a horrible scent. Super really cool. I apologize for that. The color is super cool. Um, very very nice trim. It's silver if I'm correct. Rhodium something like that. Very very nice nib. Sailor has some of the prettiest nibs. They're only really beat out by Pelican in my opinion. But these nibs are gorgeous. Um, these large ones have 21 carats. The other one have 18 or 14. I can't really remember. Proprietary converter, but it does come with one, and it's it's really really nice. Um, if they have larger hands, you may want to get them this large version, which I'll come back to in a bit. But if they have smaller hands or like smaller pens, then the regular 1911 or the Pro Gear Slim, either one of those will be really really good option. This is a great writing pen. Like the Platinum 3776, it has a bit of feedback, but nothing too bad. You can smooth it out really, really easy. And even without smoothing it out, it's a really, really fantastic writer. Very well built, very, very nice pen. All right, on to one of my favorite pens, period. Um, it's definitely making top five this year. The Kara's Customs Decagraph. So this has the biggest price range on this whole thing. Um, that you can get them over $200. I'm not going to list them in that range because it basically comes down to which nib you're going to get. This particular version here is the Keras Customs Decograph Monsoon. These are no longer available. I apologize. This is the only one I had on hand, though. Um, really, any of the Keras Customs pins are really good, but this one's my favorite. So this pen starts at about 130 I believe, with a steel nib, and then kind of goes up from there. This one I have the titanium nib on. Really, really, really nice. These come in uh, acrylics, though. I do believe they're offering an all-black aluminum version at the moment. You have to double-check me on that. But these are just great, great pens. Very, very nicely machined. They are, again, made entirely of aluminum. You can get them in a ton of different colors. Um, the acrylic versions come in a different pattern as well. It's just, it's, to me, it's the perfect weight and perfect size. Um, I wish the section were a little bit larger, but ergonomically, it's it's great. I have a titanium nib on here. Bach is the only company that offers those, as far as I know, apart from Stipula. And this is a, definitely an option you can get. These are like $35 extra, I think. And they're, they're a lot more like gold nibs than they are like steel nibs. There's a lot of flex, a lot of give to these, and they're really, really fun to write with. These pens are... Really, really, really good value. Um, if you haven't seen my review, I recommend going checking it out if you're going to purchase this. There's a few caveats to that, but overall, this is a fantastic pen. And I don't know if it's the one I'm going to recommend the most on this list, but it's pretty far up there. Last one. I almost forgot this one. I apologize for that. Um, this one is one of the more unique fountain pens in the world, in my opinion. It's the Pilot Vanishing Point. So you can see the clip there, but you'll notice there's no cap for this pen. That's because it has a click mechanism, just like a ballpoint or rollerball. You just press this in, and the nib comes out. Really, really unique. Great for really quick notes. You hold it right here. There's a bit of a concave kind of part here where you rest your fingers, and it's it's a fantastic rider. These are great. They take um, pilot cartridges, pilot converters, and they're very, very nice ton of different colors on these they do special editions every year a bunch of different patterns different materials um, these start at about 150 if you want to get one of the rod inversions which are just astronomically expensive like eight hundred dollars yeah but for most colors most um, patterns and things like that most materials these are going to be under two hundred dollars again close to that 150 range they're kind of a direct competitor with the Lamy 2000 but I think they offer such a different kind of writing and use experience um, these pens are made in japan so if you have someone who's interested in japanese culture this is a very compelling pen to get them they're really 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 nice to write with and again standard cartridge converter you can get different nibs for these as well they're a bit expensive but if you want to try out a stub or broad or medium fine whatever you can always get them and put them in the pen later really really nice pen again for about 150 to 160. All right, on to the last price range, over $200. This is some scary stuff. You get this for people you super love and don't mind spending a ton of money on. You get this for people who like luxury stuff or people that are super into fountain pens but won't buy stuff for themselves. That's where you get these. I only have two of these. <laughs> I have a list of five I'm going to recommend. 
Um, and that's because I don't have the opportunity to buy pens over $200 very often. Both of these I got from the Atlanta Pen Show this year. But I have tried all of the pens on this list, and I can definitely wholeheartedly recommend them to you. Let's go ahead and start with the ones I do have. First up, you've already noticed this little guy if you've watched the last um, section. This is the Sailor 1911 Large Royal Tangerine. Great, great pen. Really, really cool 21 karat gold nib. Beautiful, beautiful nib. They're really, really nice designs. A lot of kind of references to their company. Um, you know, Sailor, there's kind of a nautical theme with some of the pens and some of the colors. Really, really nice pen though. Pretty decent sized pen, so please keep that in mind. Um, the Pro Gear is also in this price range, which is a similarly sized pen, just flat top and flat bottom instead of rounded. And these come in a ton of different colors, designs, materials, etc. I really like this one though, this orange with the silver trim. Very, very nice pen. They're a bit overpriced in my opinion, but not terribly so. You can pick these up for just over um, $300, I believe, or just under. I apologize, just under $300, about $290. And you can get them off of eBay and Amazon a little bit cheaper if you want to go that route, so definitely check those out as well. Okay, on to the most expensive fountain pen I've ever bought. This is the Sailor. I'm sorry, it is not a Sailor. Please don't kill me. This is the Pelican M800. This particular model is the Ocean Swirl. It is gorgeous, which is the reason I bought it. Um, you can also get the Pelican M600. So I'll go ahead and go over kind of both of those in this. The M600 is smaller and uses plastic internals instead of metal internals. You'll only be able to tell that really in the weight. These pins are gorgeous. Um, go ahead and go over some of the themes here. So you can see the Pelican stamp here, a Pelican bill clip. There's little eyes, it's a little bill. Really, really cool. Um, very, very nice center band. A lot of, when you get up this price, you're going to know it's a big jump in quality, and that's just to be expected. Really, really nice section. It's a little short, but it's perfectly where I grip the pen. These nibs are hands down the most beautiful fountain pen nibs I've ever seen. These are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous nibs. Um, these are 18 karat gold, on, on this one at least. The M600 has 18 karat gold as well. Again, it's just a little smaller, a little bit lighter. These are great riders. Super, super smooth. They are a bit expensive though. The Pelican M600 retails for about 350. These retail for a little under 500. So again, these are very, very expensive, but in my opinion, they're absolutely breathtaking. And to use one and to have one is an experience in and of itself. I'll go ahead and bring these two out just for some eye candy while I'm talking about the next um, couple of pins here. I only have two more on the list. One's going to be the Pilot Custom 823, which if you watched the last list, or I'm sorry, the, the $50 to $100 list, you saw the Twisby Vac 700. It has the same filling mechanism. It's a vacuum filler, holds a ton of ink, but it has a gold nib. Very nice Pilot Gold nib. Pilot Gold nibs are very, very good, as I mentioned in the Vanishing Point um, part there. They're great nibs. They write very, very well. The pen in itself is really, really nice. Up until recently, you could only get them in a brown translucent color. You can now get them in clear or black translucent in America too, I believe. You can also get them cheaper off of um, Amazon or eBay. So if you want to save a little bit of money, try that. If you want to buy in America, by all means do. Um, the ones off of Amazon eBay are around $2, $220. The ones here in America are about $280. Really, really nice pen though. Really, really pleasurable to write with and a really cool and interesting filling mechanism. Last one on the list is also a an interesting filling, filling mechanism and uh, something very, very similar. But this pen is absolutely insane. Um, the next one on the list is going to be the Visconti Homo Sapiens. Now, this pen is made of um, basaltic lava rock. It's really, really cool in your hand. It feels amazing. They offer them in a couple different trim options. The one I like the best is actually bronze, so you can get some patina on it, or you can polish it up if you really, really want to. Very, very nice contrast there with that pen. Those use some very, very weird nib materials. Um, they're, re they're referred to as Visconti Dream Touch nibs, but they're, they're kind of like gold um, when you write with them. A little bit softer, but not a ton. Pen's a great writer, though. Be sure to check out the nibs on Visconti's, though, before you buy them. If you can get that one in store, I'd recommend that. 
Really cool material, really, really nice pen. Fairly large, fairly heavy. Interesting capping mechanism. A lot of really, really cool stuff about that pen. Um, they do range between, I've seen them as low as five, I've seen them as much as seven, maybe a little higher. They do a special edition, so they're going to above $1,000. They're made out of some crazy materials as well. So you can kind of go crazy with those Visconti Homo Sapiens line. But they're really, really nice. And if you're looking for a really, really good value out of all of those I listed, these two are probably some of the best. The M600 might be a little bit better value than this because this is ridiculously expensive. But these sailors are very, very nice as well. If you have any questions or recommendations or anything like that to add on to these lists, please let me know down in the comments. And I have one more little bonus section for you. All right, the last little section of this video is actually just going to be a few pen cases to keep those really cool pens that you just bought for whoever or yourself in. First up, the pen case that I used and had first, this is an Ashton leather pen case. And this one's a little bit puffy. It has my uh, Pelican M800 in it normally. These are very, very nice, really supple leather though. They're super, super um, inexpensive or affordable depending on how you want to phrase that. Really soft on the inside. These are about $12. And they hold a ton of different pens. This pen is enormous. It slides perfectly in there. The only real downside to these is that they are super, super bulky, but they protect your pen very, very well. Again, about $12. Really, really nice accessory to add on to your pen there. Next up, a little bit more pricey. These are rickshaw pen sleeves. These are the Solos. They come in one, two, three, and four sizes. The two is kind of like this. The three just adds one more, and the four is absolutely crazy, but go check it out. They have a ton of different other products. They're really, really nice company, and they make some really, really cool stuff, so go check them out. But um, I'll show you these real quick. So these are basically just this kind of soft nylon material. It won't scratch your pens or anything like that. Um, they offer some interesting designs. This is the Space Cat design. They no longer have this, but it's really cool. A ton of different stuff on their website. These are $15 a piece, whether you get a plain black one or a crazy one with the cat and space on it. And again, these hold some really, really nice size pens slide down in there perfectly. A lot less bulky than the leather case. A little less protective though, but not by much. And they have a very, very soft kind of faux fur inside on them. Really, really nice cases. Some of my favorites. Last case recommendation here is a little bit bigger. If you bought that special person some different pens, a few different pens, or you want to get them something to add to their pen collection they already have, this is a really good choice. This is the Knock Co. Sinclair. These are really, really, really nice cases. Very plush, soft material. Very, very nice zipper. This one has a three pen pouch inside, although I have four in there. I'll explain that in just a minute. And a notebook. So you can see the pen holder in there. There's a few slots in between. I just kind of tossed a Monteverde Mons in there. And I got my notebook. Very, very nice case. They have contrasting colors inside. So this one is orange and gray. They have a ton of different colors for these. These are super, super well made, and I carry this one around with me every single day. These are about 45 bucks. So, I hope you enjoyed that whole video. I hope you found something that you can buy for someone or buy for yourself or get with some Christmas money afterwards. Again, if you have any recommendations, please leave them down in the comments for anyone curious. And I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season and that you're able to enjoy yourselves and spend some time with your family. Thanks, guys. Bye.